Welcome to Mr. Meerkat in the Morning, the ultimate destination for non-stop music and entertainment. I know that I may not be the most typical fan of My Little Pony, but I can't help it. I absolutely love the show and everything it represents. The bright colors, the catchy songs, and the fantastic characters all captivate me. Through watching the show, I've learned so much about friendship and what it truly means. I've come to understand that true friendship isn't about what you can get from others, but rather what you can give to them. It's about standing by your friends when times are tough, and being there for them no matter what. I'm grateful to have some amazing friends of my own, and I strive every day to show them the same love and loyalty that the ponies do on the show. It may seem silly to some, but My Little Pony has really helped me become a better meerkat, so yes, I may be a bit of an oddball with my love of ponies, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Friendship truly is magic, and I'm so grateful to have learned that lesson from such an unlikely source. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is a classic piece of American literature that takes the reader on a wild and drug-fueled journey through the heart of the American dream. Written by Hunter S. Thompson and first published in 1971, this book is a prime example of gonzo journalism, a style of reporting that combines first-person narrative with unconventional writing techniques and a subjective point of view. The story follows Raoul Duke, a thinly-veiled version of Thompson himself and his attorney Dr. Gonzo, as they travel to Las Vegas in search of the American dream. Along the way, they consume copious amounts of drugs, alcohol, and engage in various bizarre and illegal activities. The book is a scathing critique of American society, politics, and culture, as well as a commentary on the state of the counterculture movement in the 1960s. The writing style of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is one of its most distinctive features. Thompson's use of language is often surreal and hallucinatory, mimicking the effects of the drugs that Duke and Gonzo are taking. The book is filled with vivid and sometimes disturbing imagery, and Thompson's ability to capture the essence of the counterculture movement is unparalleled. Overall, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is a masterful work of art that is both entertaining and thought-provoking. Thompson's ability to blend humor, satire, and social commentary is truly impressive, and his unique writing style has influenced countless writers and journalists over the years. If you haven't read this book yet, it's definitely worth checking out. Once upon a time in a forest full of trees and bushes, there was a young fox named Finn. Finn was always a bit of a mischievous fox, and always running around and causing trouble. But one day Finn met a hound named Hunter, who was also exploring the forest. At first Finn was afraid of Hunter. After all, he had always been taught that hounds were not to be trusted, but as Finn and Hunter spent more time together, they realized they had a lot in common. They both loved to run and play, and they had a strong sense of adventure. As they explored the forest together, Finn and Hunter became the best of friends. They chased each other through the trees and bushes, and they would spend hours lying in the sun, enjoying each other's company. Despite the fact that they were from two different species, Finn and Hunter learned to understand each other's needs and feelings. They communicated with each other through barks and whines, and they learned to trust each other completely. As the years went by, Finn and Hunter continued to explore the forest together, but they also learned to appreciate the simpler things in life, like lying in the sun and watching the birds fly by. They were happy just being together, and they knew that they would be best friends forever. And so, Finn and Hunter lived happily ever after, proving that even the most unlikely of friendships can blossom into something beautiful. As Leon Kennedy, my mission was clear, to rescue the president's daughter, who is a mouse, Mouse Lee Graham, from a group of cultists who had kidnapped her. I was sent to a remote village in Spain where I quickly found myself in a battle for survival. The villagers were infected with a virus that turned them into bloodthirsty monsters, and I had to use all my skills to fight my way through them. I had to be quick on my feet, and I had to rely on my wits to stay alive. As I searched for Mousley, I encountered all sorts of horrors. There were traps set up everywhere, and I had to use my cunning to avoid them. I also had to fight off all sorts of creatures from zombies to giant insects. As I made my way deeper into the village, finally I found Mousley, and I was able to rescue her. But the danger wasn't over yet. We still had to make our way out of the village and get to safety. As we tried to escape, we were pursued by the cultists and their leader, Osmond Sadler. It was a fierce battle, and I had to use all my skills to defeat them. In the end, we were able to escape, and Mousley was reunited with her father. It was a harrowing experience, but I was glad that I was able to save Mousley and complete my mission. As a member of the Special Forces, I had faced many challenges before, but this was one of the toughest. I knew that I had done my duty, 
and that I had saved the life of the president's daughter. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We hope you found it informative and entertaining. Join us again next time for more exciting programming.